Hey guys, I'm Eric. I'm Nathan. And we are Goats and Nerds. We are here at the Alamo Draft House where we have been treated to a wonderful experience watching the documentary of a wonderful film. Um, it is called Raiders of the Lost Ark, the adaptation. Nathan, first of all, what did you think of that? Ha. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, <laughs> It is, for those who don't understand or know what this thing is, shame on you. Um, second, it's a movie made by a bunch of kids back in the 80s using Betamax and VHS to create their uh, vision of Raiders of the Lost Ark that was just released in 1982. And we're going to talk to those guys, and you're probably wondering, who's those people sitting beside us? It's them, plus an actor who joined them for a, Very I guess you could special. say... It was a finale to the production, if I, you know, because it was the one thing that we're, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Gentlemen. It was the whipped cream on top of the Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Introduce yourselves, please. Uh, I'm Eric Zala, uh, director of Raiders of Lost Ark, the adaptation. I also played Belloc. <laughs> I'm Chris Trompolis. I produced the adaptation, and I played Indy. These guys were the important ones. I'm uh, Rob Fuller, and I played the German mechanic. Yes, so that and we'll like I said we'll describe uh, discuss that and describe that scene a little bit later because it's just it's hard to explain without you seeing the film or me ruining any, everything. So, guys, what was it like? Um, the, the, you saw the film. What said? Gee, I think we could do that too. <laughs> Well, I think probably I'll, I'll start, although it was Chris's uh, brainchild. When I saw Raiders uh, back when I was 11 years old, I, I, you know, I, I didn't really have high expectations, but about the time that the boulder scene happened and this colossal rock is just barreling down on, on Indiana Jones, it just, to, use, to borrow a phrase from Chris, split my brain open. <laughs> I didn't know movies could do that. I didn't know that it could be that thrilling. And there was no other movie before or, or since that, uh, that was so perfect. Um, and I know that Chris felt similarly. Yeah, for me it was just about playing Indy. Indiana Jones was one of the most amazing characters that I'd ever seen, if not the most amazing heroes on screen. And I just wanted to wear the hat and wear the jacket and inhabit that world and create the playground for myself. It was, uh, that was the most exciting prospect. Definitely. I um, want to ask you a question real quick. Uh, watching the film, and I remember in the commentary section, you were describing how uh, you really wanted to capture the essence of being Indiana Jones by channeling your inner Harrison Ford. Go about how, what did you do to prepare yourself, the mental and physical preparedness? You know, it, it, I, honestly, I get that question, and I, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just, I looked at pictures. I would, you know, do that sort of common thing of looking in the mirror. Harrison's a very physical actor, you know, a lot of flailing, and, you know, um, he's got very signature moves and very signature expressions and I, I I think it's just like getting it in you and inhabiting that and mm -hmm. and of course watching all the Star Wars movies and we had plenty of Harrison in all his you know glory back to back to back to back all through the 80s oh, yeah, you know and we you know so there's plenty of that and you know you even see you know it in Han Solo and all those sorts of characters so you know I, I think I think just after watching him for a while, you just I just got it sort of, you know, under my skin. Oh, yeah. Well, the funny thing is, as you're s describing this, I'm thinking to myself, he flails around. That's correct. He has that certain signature style, but you, you nailed it. That's the thing. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Thank well, you very much. That wing scene that we're going to describe later, it, it, you really nailed it. It was like I was, if you're not paying close enough attention, you think you're actually watching the scene. And it was phenomenal because you hit those... It's, I don't, I can't seem to put my finger on the word that I'm looking for, but you really found the, uh, the finesse in the style of Harrison Ford, the way he acts. Well, you know, you just, it's a lot of sense memory, but you also have to understand that there was, you know, a legion of people around me, um, you know, helping every, every step of the way, you know, everything from working with my best friend who knows me through and through and that was a very easy you know easy sort of pairing to working with Rob who was 
consummately prepared and really, like I've said in, in, in a few Q&As now, um, made me better in the scene. You oh, know, yeah. and, and you so, each other so, you well. know, and we had, we had teams of people that were, that were uh, showing me uh, the shots before doing it. We'd rehearse and go over and over and, and Eric would make adjustments and everything and all those refinements, including down to the editing and the music and cutting shots in a cer certain way, you know, all those things added to the result. Rob, any, anything that you want to say? No, just you guys were really prepared and made uh, my job easier, so, yeah. Cool. Just, all right. <laughs> um, Did you ask me? I got a question for you because I noticed this during the filming, that no one was, like, heavily sweating, but you were always caked with sweat. Now, is that your actual sweat, or were you being sprayed, or... Because I could tell people were hot, but you were like... Shower. You look like me right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, having my shirt off, I had to constantly use sunblock, so I would go through two or three cans a day, so it helped kind of probably glisten me more than that. But uh, I couldn't take a chance on having shirt lines, so <laughs> it seemed like I was trying to show off or something. But no, I just wanted to make sure that it was fluent throughout the whole shoot that uh, I didn't have any tan lines. So. For you guys, what was it like to actually work with, I guess, somebody who's a professional already in the industry? Because you guys haven't done any acting or film production, really, since Raiders, correct? What was it like for you guys to work with somebody who's actually in the industry, especially including the uh, director, um, unprofessional moment here? I forgot his name. Tim Skousen. There we go. And Jeremy. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, we had, you know, I mean, we've worked, uh, you know, Rob's done... Hand, you know, back-to-back -back movies, you know, big movies. Um, Eric, uh, you know, did, did some short films, and we've worked around entertainment. I've done a handful of uh, film shoots, but I've always also worked in Los Angeles for, you know, 23 years, digital entertainment, fashion, music, you know, being on film shoots and stuff like that. So um, I think it was, uh, with, the, with the plane scene, it was... It was a nice elevation, you know, for us to kind of like have our world of Raiders mm -hmm. thrust into a professional arena with people that were really good at what they do. Um, and so I think that was, um, that was special and that was exciting and reminded us of what we truly love and what we're truly good at. Um, right there, I, I have to say, I feel kind of embarrassed because I didn't realize just how much you guys kept going into the field of production and stuff. That's why you need to do your research, kids. Um, do you guys have, now in the Q&A, there was some discussion where you guys were doing a film, you had your own film company now, uh, or production company, sorry. Uh, what was some of the films that you guys are working on or having the, you and know. able to release that information. We are, we are. There's, uh, there's three projects that we're particularly excited about developing. One is, um, an original script that Chris and I have developed and co-wrote uh, over a decade of touring together, probably worked in every hotel room and airport gate, you know, <laughs> that we can think of. Um, it's a Southern Gothic action adventure called What the River Takes, um, shot in our home state of Mississippi and sort of draws upon a lot of the, uh, what's in our cin cinematic DNA, if you will. Um, universe we're very excited about. Um, secondly, there's a book that we love. It's a literary adaptation, um, also a Southern Gothic that uh, we're in discussions with the author about optioning. And then thirdly, um, m and most recently, uh, Tim Skousen, co-director of The Doc, um, approached us and is interested, would like to work with us. So uh, Rolling Boulder Films is going to be producing his next film. It's a dark cerebral sci-fi uh, post-apocalyptic tale of survival working title the flare so that's what we got cooking now in some of this ones you said it was going to take place in Mississippi, uh, Mississippi. Uh -huh. uh, are we going to see any familiar locations from your childhood being used for those films ah you know mm, it's possible but one thing I can say for certain is that we, uh, we had such an amazing team working on the airplane scene, uh, both from crew and with cast. And uh, I know for a fact that, uh, for example, Mark Spain, who built the airplane, you know, there's a huge ambitious set piece that we've got in, uh, him in mind for, and he wants to work together again, and many other 
people. So our team's been formed, forged as in fire, quite literally, having seen the doc, that uh, with that, uh, I feel like we're ready to kind of take on the world. That is excellent. Um, the airplane scene that you guys got to work on, in the documentary, it describes that it was um, ready to fly almost, it sounded like. You're bu they're building it to fly, that's the correct term. Um, did you guys have to go back and strip it at all to make it proper for as a prop rather than you know a, a flight ready airplane uh, there was some rework yeah yeah and, and that's why expressly we wanted to have the pirate uh, our pyrotechnician down there to make sure and and good thing yeah uh, uh, <laughs> mark who had a background building boats was used to building things to last um, and that's okay I mean we went into this telling our wives it's not going to be like last time, you know, when we were kids setting each other on fire. We're going to play it safe. We're going to hire a professional pyrotechnician. <laughs> what could happen? Um, so, yeah, th there was some rework, and that's okay. And we're not going to spoil exactly what he's referencing in this interview. You've got to go to the shows. you got to check it out. Yeah. Um, I almost, I, I'm one of those kind of guys. I'm going to admit, I'm, I'm masculine in a say that. I almost start crying during that scene. So you guys get an idea. Um, I was just like, I was like doing that to that. And I mean, I was kind of- It's hard for me to watch that scene. But I loved how that, that whole piece, went, yeah, I, how it ended was, I was just like consummate professional. Yeah. So, cool. um, Thanks for that. Yeah, it just, it, it's scary to see something like that happening. I'm building tension. <laughs> so. I, in the, in the uh, Q&A session uh, after the documentary, I asked a question in all jest, but in a way, do you ever feel like going in and in exploring making or asking Spiel, Mr. Spielberg himself if you could have fun and kind of do something with some of his other works or even like a certain one that nobody kind of liked? We won't mention which one. I don't think that, you know, I mean, in, in all seriousness, I mean, Raiders, Raiders, is has been um kind of like it's almost become a lifestyle for us you know and uh you know it's 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 odd to say that but um i don't know if eric and i really have any interest in going back and tinkering with any other movies um and i and even going back and i think tinkering with our own remake of another film was enough and and um and and i think it's always been our passion to sort of like really really try to work hard and move on to an original slate of projects but um yeah, I mean, uh, it's um, no more remakes. I don't think. I think I we're, completely understand. Yeah, it, I think it, we're good. It's one of those things that you do it once. It's best to just move on and just be original from that point. Yeah, and, and it's an, it's intense. It's been an intense road. Oh, definitely. <laughs> um, real quick question. Also, I was thinking. Or do you have a question? I got a bunch of them. Well, here, he's, just, he's just hogging the damn egg. I'm having fun. <laughs> I got a question. Okay, we noticed that you used a lot of you know, homemade props and stuff like that. What was the weirdest thing you used as a prop? Ah, the weirdest thing we used as a prop. Well, let's see. Um, the giant jackal statue is an old hot water heater. And uh, the two arms suspended by, were, were logs suspended from the ceiling by wires. The head was an overturned flower pot with jaws with 78 styrofoam teeth uh, stuck onto nails, so that was that was how we did the giant jackal statue. Uh, the golden idol was a uh, shrimp net bobber, with a half a Christmas ornament, duct tape on the top, face carved on the front with a knife, and spray painted gold. We went through a lot of spray paint uh, back in the day. Um, I think that was, and of course, many people spot the crown royal bag that. Uh, our indie uses to, to swap it over an un yep. unintentional bit of product placement back in the day. That's, that's probably the most unusual, I'd say. Okay, I have um, a question for each one of you to answer. For uh, the man of your, your field, you know, being director, producer, actor, what advice do you have for people wanting to get in that field? into the field of filmmaking, filmmaking specifically acting producing acting ah. directing first off it's not for everyone <laughs> it is uh filmmaking 
directing, it's the hardest thing I know how to do, quite literally. It's also the most satisfying. Um, but I would say best advice is not give up and always finish in, be in brief. I your passion. Yeah. Yeah, just to take your time. Uh, it doesn't happen overnight being an actor. Uh, I've been doing this eight years now professionally, and it's a matter of trying to string together projects because being in Kansas City, I travel a lot. So uh, it's kind of good being centrally located because uh, when I shot this film, I also shot one in New Orleans, and I shot one in Mississippi, Atlanta, and then I flew to L.A. So uh, my projects were all over the country, so I would have been kind of screwed if I would have been in L.A. So uh, you don't necessarily have to be an actor living in L.A. You can be wherever you want, but you have to want to go out and take that risk and yeah, be on the road. It, it's going to take some time. So, Well, from a producing standpoint, I would say that choose your project projects wisely because you're going to be shouldering a great deal of responsibility, harnessing a lot of energy, and you're, you, you're carrying that baby over the finish line. And there's going to be a lot of, um, a lot of compromise and um, a lot of things that you're going to be hit with. As a producer, you have to deal with a lot of different personalities. So I'd say work on your inner diplomat and know what you want and don't be afraid to ask for it. And, and also a, a thick skin. I think you all have to agree. You have to develop that thick skin. And it's so cliche, I know, because you're talking I about dealing. I personally say that you need to have a thick skin. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It, the reason why is not just because, like you're saying, the people you work with that you don't normally work with on a regular basis, but your best friend. We fight constantly over everything until we realize we're talking about the same exact thing and I mean you guys have well I think that's one of the things you have to be able to do is that you have to you know set your ego aside if it's ever possible and know that you have to inevitably make the best decision for the project at the end of the day because that's really what you're trying to do it's not yes. about yeah, right. making a best decision for you it's making the best decision for the project and um, yeah, thick skin is important. People are going to be yelling at you and mm -hmm. telling you no. And also filmmaking is really exhaustive. I mean, we pushed ourselves in that scene harder than I've ever pushed myself with anything. And you start to unravel and people start to fray. And, and when that happens, you fall back onto the primitive self. And a lot of people do that. And they look to you to be the leader, you know, and they look to you to like justify the decisions and why the hell are we still here and why are we doing this? And so, you know, when somebody who is twice your size is, is screaming at you, you know, um, I think that as a producer, remaining calm, you know, unless it's time not to remain calm. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> you run into those situations with all kinds of people and it's very important to get around that problem. Um, now, I stepped off camera. I, d I just want to let you guys know I wasn't trying to be rude. Um, our friend who's been our photographer had this wonderful prop that his brother made years ago that would have been so perfect to replace the certain prop that you guys use in your opening piece, but unfortunately we left it in the car. <laughs> it was the idol and it was like, from memory, from memory, oh, yeah. like that. and it really? was perfect. Uh, looking forward to seeing it po we off will, camera. We will bring it up for you guys later, and our photographer Dave, he will get a, a snapshot of it. Hopefully, with you guys holding it, because it's an excellent piece. And um, now you said you're, uh, I'm going to play dumb for a second. You said you're from Kansas City, then. Awesome. Don't stalk him, ladies. He said he has children, so you know, and he's bigger than most of us. He'll probably, you know. Of course, he's a big teddy bear. Look at him. Come on. Look at that smile. I don't know. In that documentary, I think I wet myself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was more information we needed to know. So, um, where is your next stop after t uh, Kansas City? We are leaving in the Raiders RV early in the morning at the butt crack of dawn, uh, driving okay. 10 hours to uh, Denver, Colorado, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, we've got a, a screening at the, uh, the Almo Draft House in Littleton um, one night and the SIE Center in, also in Denver the following day as well. Looking forward to that. Um, we've also got family, um, uh, both there. 
And uh, since the first time, since we kicked off the tour, June 2nd in Seattle, a little bit of a, a breather. We, we're actually going to be stopping in a place nice. for, uh, it won't be a city, a different city every night. And, uh, and that'll be nice. Now, I want to make sure I'm clarifying correctly on this for our viewers. These have, uh, are pretty much put on by the Alamo Draft House. Is that correct? Or does that just happen to be where you're doing it most at? Well, you know, the uh, certainly we're hitting as many Alamo Draft Houses as we can, but uh, not limited to that. We're, we're hitting cinemas all throughout uh, the country from the Northwest Film Forum in Seattle, uh, you know, to, uh, to many, many uh, throughout. And the reason for that is that the documentary Raiders, the story of the greatest fan film ever made, which is why we're here, mm -hmm. um, is a Draft House Films release. Okay. So, nice. so it's, you know, yeah, it's, it's primarily. So we're doing sister, sister theaters, uh, other corresponding partner theaters, but it's a Draft House Films release, okay. hence the Alamo Draft House presence. Definitely. There you go, folks. So Now, um, we're going to wrap this up for you guys so you guys get to doing what you need to do tonight. Um, what is the best way for fans to reach out to you, follow you, and get more information? Primary uh, spot is RaidersGuys.com. Uh, that's really the best best place to go. That has has access to our Facebook site, our Twitter site, our Instagram, uh, you know, uh, profile. Um, it has our full tour schedule. It's got all of our merch that helps us support the tour and keep us going in our now current 58 city tour. Um, and uh, you can engage with us there if you have ideas about bringing the, the the doc or the adaptation to your city. You can email us there at RaidersGuys at gmail .com. and any. Anywhere on the social media landscape, we are, are Raiders guys. Okay. So that's how you can find us. Excellent. And Mr. Fuller, uh, where can people reach you for maybe as a fan of anything they've seen you in or to get in touch with you for maybe convention circuit um, stuff? Uh, probably the best way is IMDB. Uh, just go to that or uh, actually Facebook me. Uh, always answer questions or do anything like that. Uh, Social media is <laughs> yeah. easy to get to, but yeah, for projects coming up, as IMDb, best way to check me out. All right, great. So guys, um, Nathan and I, you can catch us here on Notes and Nerds on YouTube and Facebook and pretty much our own website, notesandnerds.com, for more great stuff because, you know. So guys, remember, don't, don't think that if you have a great idea that it's never going to succeed because look at these guys. They started off as kids with I would maybe a therapeutic dream and always take that piece of sand and turn it into a pearl but it's amazing what what you can do with a dream and god i'm going to start sound cliche and stuff so no, i'm going to stop nerd was a dream <laughs> raiders was a dream you guys are an inspiration to all the kids this generations of kids Most and us to you know us being filmmakers directors producers trying to get our stuff out into the world so thank you thank you very much guys and tune in for more stuff later guys